This is Stephanie at High Terra Stitching with today's video, which is the construction of a quilt block. I was going to give this quilt a shot, so I started by doing my block, which is what I usually do is to do one block. And this is from the, the, Almanac, the Quilter's Almanac. It's called Scrappy Stars. If you're a beginning quilter, this has got two nice parts to help you get started constructing a block that's a little more difficult. If you look at the center block, this is the main block we're going to be looking at first. And in the center, there is a 16 patch. I'm going to show you how to do that one. And then the other thing it has is the hourglass an hourglass box. Once the center block is put together, then large triangles are added on the corners because then this quilt block is set on point, which means instead of looking at it straight on like we did at the beginning, you're looking at it as a diamond shape now, and you can really see the hourglasses. And one thing I want to say to you is that <clears throat> when you do your hourglasses and you put those pieces in, you're going to put the two corners that are the same color next to each other, and you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. And then this is one hourglass, and this is the other hourglass, but you notice that the browns touch each other. And I made a mistake on one of the blocks, and I didn't have them like that, and it, it made it look kind of goofy. First part of our construction is the 16 patch. And to do the 16 patch, you cut strips of material one and a half inches by 21 inches long. And what you're going to have is four sets of four. It's one, two, three, four. And you choose, you can make these all different colors. Each one can be a different color. In, in the set that you have, but I just started out with some greens and some browns because that was what I was going to use, and I started and set up the beginnings of each of my four piles and then added to those. Once those are put together, once those are cut, then you're going to take and sew those together. And these are what's left over. These were the remnants of what I had after I had uh, cut them apart. So once you get those long strips fixed, and I press the seams open because I like to have it there, there's not so much material to go through, then you're ready to cut the strips apart. And here you can see they're cut in one and a half inch widths. And you can take and do a bunch of those and then start putting them together. Or you could do, I just did that one set of four, and I turned the... Uh, pieces different ways up and up and down so that I could get different combinations in the center and so here's a completed 16 square or 16 patch and for this one you need uh, 10 of that you're going to need 10 of those to be successful when sewing these strips I suggest that you take a strip and you pin it all the way down Make a one-fourth inch seam as carefully as you can, and then open the seams and gently press, don't iron them, but press flat before you get ready to cut them. And remember, in there you had dark colored fabrics, dark prints, but then you had the light backgrounds. And these are the two pieces that you're going to need for that. You're going to need two five and a fourth inch pieces and you're going to need four four and a half inch pieces those are those corners we're not going to have to do anything to those except sew those on but we're going to come back to the five and a fourth because this is part of your hourglass and to make it easy to do you can you want to take and make a center seam from um, that corner down to the other corner and then you want to come out one fourth inch. That's going to be your stitch line on that side. And then you want to do one fourth inch on that side. 
and I had broken down and bought myself one of these uh, nice rulers which you can lay right there and it does it and you just mark it on both sides but you can just as easily do that with your ruler once you get that marked you have another set piece and this is one five and a quarter inch dark uh, pattern one whatever you want it to be and then you have another one which is a five and a fourth dark number two. Those are the two that are going to go together to make the hourglass for that block. You just need two of those. You're going to take your cream colored one, both of your cream colors, and you're going to lay those very neatly on top of the dark prints and then pin, up, pin those in place. That's the beginning of your hourglass. So now we're going to stitch the hourglass. And this one I had pinned together. I've already stitched down both sides. And you can see a dark line. That was the magic marker and or a Sharpie. And I wanted to do that so you'd see it. But I made sure that I sewed on the inside of it because I sure didn't want to use up too much of my material. That one's sewn. Now I've got the other one. I've sewn one side, and so I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to go down the outside, the other one that I had. So I've got my little stop stitch there so that it catches my first stitch. And then I'm going to go, and I'm like, there again, that line's so thick, I'm going to stitch down the inside of that. Okay, once I get those stitched, Next part's easy. That's an easy part. Just so long as you make sure you're, everything's nice and neat and pinned so it stays together. Now you're going to take and cut. Cut straight down the center on both pieces. And you'll see that we have one that's that color, that rust, and another one like that, and there's two of each of those. Okay, so now I've taken and pressed those open. That's why I like to do it. If you like to press them towards the dark, you can do that. But you're going to lay those together so that a dark is with a light, and the other end, the dark, then that should be by that light. And this is where you want to be really careful. You want to really line those up. And you can cut those ends off. That, that's not going to matter. But you want this to be pinned so it doesn't, so it doesn't move. And I'll show you why. So then as I turn this around, there again, I want to line this up. So that it doesn't doesn't move because when you stitch this you're going to turn it and I've used my little that little ruler and I've made it go from corner to corner I've got my center and I've got my two stitching lines and you want to make sure that this is nice on top of each other and so sometimes when I'm not quite sure I'll actually take and poke it right there at the center and turn it over and see where that hits and it's pretty close, so I think I'm just going to bend my needle a little bit. And there, and then I know it's right, and I've got my piece right where I want it. All right, so I might actually leave the pin in there for a few minutes. Now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to stitch that. Put that in there to catch the first stitch. And I'm going to go, just like we did before, from one end... Turn it around. And I'll come back down. And then we'll see if we've got our magical hourglass. Because I'm going to take and cut between those two lines. And 
open her up and that's pretty good and there you can see we've got our hourglass so as you look back at the square that we wanted to make we're going to add the pieces there's our nine patch added right where it would be here's one of the hourglasses I'm going to add it right up on top my other hourglass now this is what I was talking to you about a little bit ago that you can see where I've got that rusty colored one up at the top I want him to have the other rust next to him like that and I didn't do the other two parts yet when I get the other block done that we did because we had two of them then I'm going to have the flower next to the flower, rust next to rust, and a flower next to that one. And you see how this is coming together? Once you do those two basic construction pieces, and you do them really care do them carefully, then all of a sudden the only thing you need is the four and a half inch for that corner, four and a half inch for that corner, and that corner, and that corner. And you'd say, oh, that's that main block that's finished. So there's only one more component. To be able to put these squares together, we're going to have additional pieces. And that's what these uh, corner pieces are, if you look up there. It's made out of two triangles put together, and they're on each corner. So there's going to be eight of those. And what I did was, when I was cutting out to do my our hourglass pieces that's when I'd cut the nine and three-fourths inch um, squares and here's an example of one this is nine and three-fourths inch and then you take and you do a diagonal cut leave it sit and then do a diagonal cut the other way and you're going to have a lot of those because there's four for every block. And I'm going to show you um, the quilt because I went so far by the directions for the center part. And I'll show you that. And this is one of those quilts that you take all of your blocks. And you probably you want to lay them out on your floor or on your bed, wherever you like to put them. So that you can see how they're going to be. And basically right now... I haven't sewn the triangles on the back yet. So what I did was I just laid out the white creamy block part, the center of our block, big block. And then I came back and I started adding those other colors to the outside. And so far I liked it pretty good. The um, funny thing was that I took, I got in a hurry and I had four pieces I needed and I cut them out and I put them on and but then I took a picture with the camera and I can't tell you what a difference it would make because there are four pieces those last four pieces I did that are going to have to come out um, because they really d don't show up well and they're those light light blue ones and I've already got uh, new ones cut for that but there's the square that we were looking at here's the square that I'm going to go and add the outside edges to I just put it on my carry board and take it to the sewing machine. And once I get this all put together, there's you can put an edge around it, a double edge or a single edge. The one thing about it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight full blocks. But then you need two more because you're going to cut them in half. Now the reason it takes two instead of just one is because you have to make sure when once you find the halfway mark that you go out and add an extra one fourth inch to the edge to make your uh, seam for that one. Here's the picture of the completed quilt in the magazine and you can see the border that's put on the outside. After all of that hard work, I want to show you uh, about what I was talking about, about for the two half blocks that you need. Right now, I've got my ruler sitting from corner to corner. And if the top's going to be the piece I want to save, I'm going to pull the ruler towards me a fourth of an inch. 
and that will give me what the seam that I need and that's where I would cut the other piece you can use for another little project something like that but you'll need two of those pieces because there's one at the top in the center and one at the bottom in the center this is my scrappy redo the author used 20 dark print fat quarters and 10 light for the light part fat quarters I just went into my stash so I could make it um, really scrappy because I like that look. Today our construction was to make a 16 patch and to make four hourglass squares. We laid out the block, we sewed the main block, and then we saw how to add the triangles to each side. Here are the dimensions for the pieces for one block. Thank you for watching. This is Stephanie. Any notes that I have related to the construction will be in the description. If this was helpful or looked like fun for you to do, Please subscribe and hit like, and I love comments. Thank you.